That was a Dentex. Was it really? Yeah, asleep. Welcome to beautiful, scorching Greece in the summertime. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before from the Mediterranean, you'll know that I haven't been very successful here in my spearfishing exploits, but that's for a good reason. It's very difficult to dive here. There's not a lot of fish and it's generally pretty deep and there's a lot of people that dive here. So that combined with clear water and cagey fish makes it pretty hard to find one. Now I'm just scouting it now to make sure that it looks safe. I guess I haven't been here before, but what I can see behind me here is some big paragliding boats. And I think I'm going to wait for those tourist boats to disappear a little bit before I get in this afternoon. I might wait till around four o'clock when the sun's going to be disappearing behind these mountains. There'll still be light around, but I think most of those guys will go home by then. So we'll come back a bit later. Exciting though, I've got two new spear guns to test. This wooden carbon Rob Allen roller that Rob Allen doesn't even really want me to talk about, so sorry Rob. It's a pretty cool looking gun and I've also got a beautiful carbon fiber spear gun from Orca Spear Guns in Spain to test out. I haven't tried either of these guns so I think when I get in I might do a little bit of target practice, just shoot the gun a few times first, but which gun to take in today? Tough question. They're both really really nice looking guns. One thing that's interesting to note is this ridge here that you can see, this mountain carries on all the way to that headland down there past the hotel. Now, I'm hoping that the bathymetry, the seabed follows a similar sort of shape with rocks. Whereas if you look back this way, where the beach was down there, there's no mountains. So I'm hoping that the landscape follows what the sea is going to do, which should mean some rocks and fish. Here we are. The beloved sport tube makes its triumphant return to the channel. I don't think I've seen a nicer looking off the shelf carbon fiber spear gun than this. If it works half as good as it looks, watch out fish. Pew pew pew! This cave gave me some clues as to what we might find further around the headland. Although this was shallow, it was a good start. Now if we could just find one of those at 20 meters. As we approached the headland, I could see some blue runners and bonito whizzing past, so I made a dive. They saw me and promptly headed off in the opposite direction. Saw those little, I think they were either blue runners or little, little tuna like little bonito looking things. That's a good sign. <laughs> it's more than I've seen in the last six dives in Greece. <laughs> ah, this sunset might just do the trick for us. There were thick clumps of bait fish looking skittish on the surface. There had to be a predator around here somewhere eating these things. It was still only shallow here at around 8 metres, but the structure looked too good to ignore. It always takes me a while to get back into the groove of diving the Mediterranean. The hunting style is slow, calculated, and you have to keep well hidden. I knew there had to be something in this area, so we kept working along this rock edge, planning to look inside the cracks. That's when I spotted it. A Dentex.
Antex. Was it really? Yeah, asleep. What? I thought you hit it. I did. I think I must have hit the rock behind it that it was sleeping on, so the spear didn't go the whole way through. <laughs> oh, that is a... That's a tough one to swallow. Smacked it good, but just... Yeah, you can see the rock on the end of my spear. It just hit the rock on the other side and didn't... Didn't get the flopper out. Oh! <laughs> We searched and searched all under the nearby rocks for the Dentex to no avail. Sadly, there were lots of lionfish present in this area and I wasn't sure if the local restaurants would be happy to cook them for me, so I just let them be. Obviously, this place gets hit by local spearfishers with this shaft being firmly lodged into the seafloor. It also had a moray eel defending it. The sun was getting very low behind the mountain and we had a decent swim ahead of us. Time to head back in. I'm not going to lie, that Dentex did keep me up a little bit last night. <laughs> it's just... Uh, you couldn't write that sort of stuff that I finally find one and it's asleep and it's in 10 meters of water and I shoot the fish but the spear hit the rock on the other side and that's what stopped the flopper going through the fish and engaging so that's why I lost it. It's absolutely gutting to lose a fish like that let alone such a prize fish for me, a Dentex but that's the way it goes sometimes. The sea once again proving whenever you think you're good it just humbles you again leaving this hotel today I've got a few more days at another hotel different part of the island so i'll go be diving out there it looks a little more promising with some slightly deeper water the stuff around here was only max sort of 10 12 meters which means it's going to get dived by a lot of local people and as you saw yesterday i pulled a spear out of a cave so people are fishing these areas bye hotel you were very nice this is the next hotel view this particular hotel is a little bit further south in the island than the last one we were at, so maybe that's a bit further from Rodos town in the north, which means that there might be less people, less fishing pressure here. I don't know, but the water definitely gets deeper off there. I've looked at the charts, so tomorrow afternoon, once the sun gets a bit lower, a bit, bit earlier than right now, after three or four o'clock, I'm gonna go swim out and see what I can see. My fin. Yeah, I think there's a blue line up there. There's gotta be. Disappointingly, the visibility was only a few meters. The visibility's just opened up here as I've come around this corner. Thankfully, it's open to about 10 meters, and I think it, it gets, it's going to get bluer as I go out, but even if it stays this sort of 10 to 15 meter visibility, it'll probably be really good for hunting fish because they might not be able to see me approaching, which helps me because. I need all the help I can get here. I found a gutter that led to a small bay and off in the distance I could see some mullet milling about. The combination of my gun being too long and too little weight on my weight belt made it very difficult to stalk in this area. Really distracted at hunting those mullets up in the shallows there. There was one really good size in and amongst them. It's just really shallow there. I also saw a Sago Pizzuto, the long snout Sago. Really, really good size come out of a hole there. So it's looking promising, even though it's you know, pretty easy to get here. So I'm hoping that a bit further along there's more fish. 
I'd just seen a solid Sargo feeding on the other side of this ridge. My plan was to dive away and sneak my way around the rock. However, I was quickly distracted. With only limited time on my hands, I pushed further towards the deeper water. Here the seabed gradually sloped to sand and there were loads of cracks and holes in the igneous rock. This area looked like there would have to be a groper living here, somewhere. Once I saw the labyrinth of holes, I realized I had the wrong spear gun in my hands. It was too big to look in the holes with effectively, so my only hope was to find a groper outside of its lair. The visibility's changed here again, but it's a huge vertical wall. Some nice big holes at the bottom there. It's not super deep, it's only like 15, 20 meters. And it looks like there's gonna be a groper anywhere. It would be around here, so gonna have a bit more of a look. In retrospect, I can see I was diving far too quickly here, and it's no wonder I didn't see this gold blotched groper sitting out in the open. I certainly think I could have made a shot on it if I had seen it earlier. Poor visibility made it hard to see over the rock edge, so I returned to the surface, made another dive on the other side of the rock so that the sun was behind me. This white groper was incredibly difficult to see until it moved. I've seen this behavior before in videos where the white gropers swim off and then turn and face the diver. In the poor visibility, I wasn't sure exactly how big this fish was. And in the end, I decided not to take the shot. What an awesome couple dives that has been just there. Saw a golden groper as I came down over this sort of volcanic looking rock. And I didn't really see it in time, but it spooked away. And then as I followed it down the ledge a little bit more, I saw another one that was a lot bigger. Definitely would have been able to shoot that. A dive later, I came down, white grouper. Nothing, I've, I've never seen one of those before. Super stoked to see one. It was a little bit on the small side. I mean, I mean, I probably could have shot it. It might have been about two kilos, but I thought I might just observe and enjoy the, the experience that it was. I had my gun pointed out because I just wasn't quite sure. The water's dirty, but I thought, well, no, I'll just let it go. I also did see a big Sargo down there as well next to it. So that sort of gave me a gauge that it was a little bit small. So all in all, 
really stoked on this spot so i think i might come back here in the coming days if the wind drops off the visibility might be a bit 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 better might be easier to hunt here but for now i'm going to maybe do a few more drops and then make my way in i found more structure that looks promising took a mental note ready to return again come out again two days later after some target practice yesterday and the wind has died off a lot i can already see the visibility is much better it's the oh, it's the weekend as well so i don't really know if all these boats zipping around are going to affect the fish but we'll see if it does or not but i'm going to swim out to my point where i saw the groper two days ago try my luck there Half an hour of solid swimming later, I've reached the point. When I'm diving these drop-offs, I want to be as hidden as possible from the fish. Anchoring my float with a drop weight keeps me visible to the boats, but allows me the freedom to move and stalk as I please. I also removed the clip from the handle of the gun as it was making noise when I was crawling along the bottom. I dived in exactly the same spot that I'd seen the gold blotched groper last time. With the visibility being better, I had high hopes of seeing something worth shooting. That cheeky little white groper was back and sitting high off the bottom. I'm glad I didn't pull the trigger last time as I could see it was too small in the better visibility. I could also see that gold blotched groper behind it as well. It was heading for its lair and I knew this would be my only opportunity. Well, that was certainly the white groper and the golden groper that I saw yesterday. Exact same spot. I made a good call the other day not shooting that white groper. I could see it a bit better in the visibility today and it was definitely a bit too small for, for my liking. But the golden groper was, was definitely in. But it was looking at me just before it darted into its hole. And I took a very difficult longish shot and just missed it. But it's good to know that I'm seeing the fish and getting closer to them, that's a heck of a lot better than I usually do in the Mediterranean. So I'm going to keep looking up this patch of coast here and see if I can find another one of those sitting out like that. Not allowed to use a torch here in Greece, otherwise it would probably be pretty easy to find it in a hole and kill it, but that's the rules. These dust clouds at the front of the holds indicate a fish has moved quickly in the area. Once again, it reinforced the fact that I probably needed a shorter gun to effectively fish these holes and catch the fish that were hiding in them. As always with afternoon dives, I was out of time and had to head back in. Tough swim today. I just looked here. It was 1.5 kilometers to the furthest point. I saw that white groper that I saw yesterday. It was a bit smaller than I initially anticipated when I saw it today in the cleaner water, but it was still foggy down the bottom. But I did see that golden groper and made a shot, but not to be, it's a tough place to fish, but that's what makes it so rewarding, I guess, when you finally actually do catch something, if that ever happens. But the important thing is I'm seeing fish more so than I have on other, other trips. So I might dive one more day on this holiday Hopefully we can eat some fresh fish that I've shot instead of going to a restaurant. Not that you mind going to the restaurants. I like going to the restaurants as well. <sighs> we'll see. With only one more opportunity to dive on the trip, we decided to get up early for sunrise and try somewhere further south.
Good morning. Last morning, last full morning. What am I saying? Last full day in Greece. And I'm gonna go dive out here and around the corner. A little bit of a different spot. Sort of sunrise. We saw the sunrise, but a little bit late. We'll see how we go. How do you feel about spending our last morning together in Greece diving? So happy. <laughs> This lovely local down here has just said that it's a good spot for fishing, better than when we were, well, better than where I've been in the previous days. Let's see. Less than 100 yards out into the bay, I spotted a sand bowl which had shoaling fish. I thought they could be sea bass off in the distance and made a dive. Although they were only small mullet, I felt I had dived pretty well in the shallow water to get close enough for a shot, if they were bigger. I knew it was supposed to get deeper quickly out of this bay. I was hoping that some of the predators still might be out after an evening hunt due to the full moon. With 25 meters visibility, it was easy to spot this cavern from the surface. Half a dozen dives later, I thought we should try looking in the shallows. No target species spotted, but lots of little fish dancing around in the morning sun. Sometimes it's easy to overlook the simple things in the sea when you're focused on hunting. Once again, I headed out to deeper water around 25 meters and spotted some interesting structure. I'm sure a groper has called this cave its lair in days gone by. A perfect place to ambush the bait fish hanging around by the seagrass. Today, only lionfish called it home. Breakfast time? <laughs> it looked like a beautiful spot on Google Maps, but I think it is a beautiful spot and lots of scuba divers go here also, so that could have been the reason why we didn't see so many fish today. But we did see some mullet early in the morning, right when the sun was coming up, which was pretty cool to see. They were a little bit too small, unfortunately, to spear. Didn't see a whole heap other than the mullet and some small sargos. Saw plenty of tiny little groper, but not a bad way to end the trip with fantastic visibility. I think it's the best visibility we've had the whole trip, I'd say. Once again, Mediterranean proving a very difficult school to learn how to spearfish and learn to try and hunt these waters. It's so different to what I'm used to, but that's what I love about it. That's the challenge and I will be back. Bit of bad luck this trip. Well, good and bad luck. It's very good luck that we found a sleeping tent eggs, but it's also very bad luck about what happened to that. But it's just got me that much closer to getting that goal of getting a dentex. Missed the golden groper as well, but it's a lot closer than I've been in previous years. So next time we get back to the Mediterranean, I'll take you with us.
Despite not taking a fish on this trip, I gained plenty of invaluable experience for next time. Shore diving severely limits your options in the Mediterranean, and next time I will definitely hire a boat for the day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.